I remember traveling with my daughter. Her ears were popping and she was just screaming her head off. <laughs> and I still can remember every moment of that first plane ride. Traveling can be stressful all on its own. And then you throw your loving kids in the mix. It's totally intimidating. Welcome to The Air Up There, a podcast about the wide world of aerospace, presented by the Federal Aviation Administration. Hi, and thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Kristen Alsop. Travel isn't always easy, and as a parent, I can tell you that kids can make it a real challenge. On this episode, we'll be talking about the joys and the stresses of flying with kids with a parent who has a lot of travel experience and plenty of relatable stories. Michelle Pratt is a nationally certified child passenger safety expert and the founder of Safe in the Seat, and she has practical advice for parents like me on navigating family travel. Thanks, Michelle, and welcome to our podcast. We appreciate you being here today. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. So I'm just interested to, to kind of find out where your passion for traveling with kids and car seats kind of stemmed from. So I'd say my passion first started um, just to be a mom and to figure out all the details of mom life. And when I first had to bring my son home from the hospital, like I was so overwhelmed by, well, obviously all the things, but I felt like I should have been, I didn't, I don't know if I didn't do enough work on the car seat aspect of things, or I didn't know I needed to. And it's sort of like my passion for helping others that were feeling that same way. It kind of like started to, to start then when I had my son, but obviously I was quite busy dealing with the newborn stage and all of those things. And so I just, over time, decided, you know what, I want to help more parents in this car seat area. There are a lot of other people that are feeling the way I am, where this is so critically important, but there aren't maybe enough resources or people talking about car seats like me, like from mom to mom. And so I just sort of started safe in the seat to do that and quickly became aware that travel was going to be a huge aspect of, you know, safety and car seats and mom life and how to make all of those things work together is a, it's a, it's a balancing act for sure. Yeah. And I can, I can definitely appreciate that new mom thing. I can remember like we had the car seat in the car and we were good, but when we brought it into the hospital, like I was like, I don't even know how to like pull it tight for him. Right. Like, right. Like you don't think about that consciously until you're in the moment with the baby. It's one of the biggest tips I give to everyone is like, please practice. Yeah. You probably never used a car seat before. Just because you have a child coming home with you does not mean you now are just like, poof, you magically know how to use this device that's going to save their life. So yeah, yeah, everyone that's listening, practice. If you're expecting, <laughs> make sure you get a teddy bear or a baby doll or your friend's baby and practice. Yeah, I was definitely like, oh my gosh, I don't even know how to get my kid in this thing. What am I doing? Yep, 100% same. <laughs> so what kinds of things do you think about um, when you're helping kids pack for a flight or when you're packing a kid for a flight? So my son is nine and my daughter literally just turned seven. And over the years of travel, I'm a really big advocate of preparation. I mean, I don't know that that will surprise anyone, especially considering we just talked about practicing before you have have your baby. But I, depending on the developmental stage of the child, I really like to get them involved in the process. And that can be as simple as some books that can take them through what to expect in the, not just on the airplane, but in the airport is honestly where to focus more. Um, Some role play can be really helpful. Pretend play with their dolls or their favorite stuffy. And I've even taken it for um, one of my kids in particular is a special needs kid. Um, Before we flew, I took him to a government uh, building downtown and had him go through security. So he would really understand what that process was like. I think that can be very helpful for kids. You have to let go of that lovey in the security line. So that preparation is just what to expect and like what they plan to see as they move through the different stages of the airport and what mom or dad or the caretaker expects from them as well. I love that idea of like role playing or getting them really comfortable with going through the process of what's going to happen. Um, yeah, we've done it a lot of times, you know, so for us walking into an airport, we know that you're first going to check your bags. That's, you know, appropriate for bringing a car seat. You're definitely checking your bags. 
uh, and going through the escalators or the elevators or, you know, then waiting in the security line going through what's going to happen in that line that we have to wait at a gate before we get on. How do I get down an airplane aisle? What is what does that look like? Do I get to hold your hand, mom? Are you going to carry me? I think all of those things were just second nature for us as adults. And we forget this is for many of our kids, their very first time experiencing it. Many of our airports as well, let you go to them and explore. And that can be really great for kids too. just get them in an airport and let them see a little bit of what's going to happen and walk them through some of that process. It's actually a great activity just in general um, to do with to do with your kids. That is a great tip. I really like that. Get to the airport, check it out, at least see it, be comfortable with it. And, and as you said, like role play through it and get them comfortable. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think preparation with our kids in pretty much any setting pays off so much in the reduction of tantrums, of bad behaviors, of unwanted behaviors. If we put that effort in the beginning, it pays off tenfold when we're in those moments. And you're going to have, you know, kids who are going through that separation anxiety too, you know, so you're dealing with that as well in, in some ages that can be really probably difficult to get them to go through, you know, the security part of TSA without being able to hold on to mommy or daddy. And that can also be as you're role playing or practicing, you know, working with your kid on what would help you do this, what's something that would be helpful for you. And maybe you come up with a song or a game or a timer or whatever, you know, maybe comforting to your child or when we get on the other side you're going to get the secret snack that i packed for you you know whatever those things are that we need to use we pull out all the stops when it comes to travel <laughs> just whatever it takes to help it be as smooth as possible for your kid and obviously for for you yeah and you you bring up a good point there we've talked about preparing the kids but i think there's also you know a well-known mental load that parents take on when they think about packing and think about traveling how can we help um, prepare ourselves, you know, with that anxiety and that daunting travel anxiety that we might be feeling. As somebody who like struggles with anxiety, uh, for me, the best way is to really map it out, to plan it out, and to also know that the best laid plans are never going to happen. But by having them, I can almost handle them changing a bit easier. Um, Honestly, my number one way of dealing in those situations is making sure my kids are totally prepared. It, it really is for everything from like we talked about the role playing or what to expect to snacks and games and how to fill the dead time when they have to wait. If I'm able to get all that stuff kind of done. And by the way, that doesn't have to happen two days before your trip. So, so much of this can be done well in advance so that as you are, you know, bearing the weight of that mental load leading like a couple days up to the trip. You can be focused on packing the clothes and figuring out where you're going to park and, you know, all those other like things that are more timely that have to happen right before you before you go. I always tell parents, too, and I the, everyone will probably laugh when they hear this, but like try to get a good night's sleep. You know, <laughs> eat everybody. You need to prioritize eating like little things to just take care of your own body is it's going to be important. Make sure you hydrate the days leading up and during that day. You know, that stuff is going to help get you through too. And remember, it's a short period of time. We've birthed children. We brought children home. We have done sleepless nights. We have done all the difficult things. We can make it through a couple hours or a full day, whatever it is, of travel. Like, we can do it. I find just putting some, sometimes putting that in perspective can be really helpful for me to say, I can do anything for 24 hours or for five hours. It's going to be over. Yeah, I think for me, part of the like the anxiety or the tricky part of the travel, um, we took our, our then nine-month-old to Florida um, with so many bags, the car seat, the pack and play, the, you know, the baby bag, like the kid, um, and just trying to like manage, we have four hands and sometimes it's just one person traveling. Like how, how do you manage all of that? Do you have any tips for packing? Um, yeah. Just generally, maybe so, pack less stuff. I mean, I we pack everything. I mean, I think, you know, that, and the logistics is the hardest part of the travel, right? So yeah. um, also you role-playing some of the logistics can be very, very helpful. And I know people are like, that's ridiculous. I shouldn't do that. I really recommend people do that. Take your empty suitcase, take your car seat, your stroller, your diaper bag, your kid's backpack that they're going to end up not carrying, all of that stuff, 
and figure out what it's going to look like when you're the human octopus that has to carry all of it. If you have a significant other that's going with you or just another travel companion, map out in advance who's responsible for what. Yeah, on game day, it may change a little bit, but if it's really clear to say you're doing this and I'm doing this, then you will not get to the airport pissed off because somebody right. in an eight, I think you're like, you're, you're looking at your partner like, are you going to get that bag or what? Exactly. <laughs> you're not like, um, do you see what's happening here? Are you going to participate? We can, because that's part of our like ability to get through the day too. We don't want to be upset with whomever we're traveling with all day, but if the, I love the saying, people can't meet expectations if they don't know what they are. Mm-hmm. And having that discussion in advance, if you are able to travel with another adult or even older kids, can be you're required to carry your backpack, you're required to hold your sister's hand until we get to X, Y, Z, whatever it might be, those things, lining them out in advance, um, I think is really going to help you. And then be as hands-free as possible in the packing. So if like a stroller is accompanying you, put some carabiners on it, those hooks. And that way when the backpacks start going off your kids' shoulders, they don't want to carry it. You have water bottles with clips, they're over it. Start clipping that stuff on to the stroller. Make sure the cargo space underneath it is open for you. Wear a backpack. Baby wear your child because you can baby wear through security, which can be super helpful. Just anything you can do to eliminate the need for your hands to be, you know, occupied and thinking that through and practicing it in advance, I think is a game changer. That's a great tip. Yeah, because we did not totally think that one through and it was it was a lot. It, it's not going to be perfect. None of it's going to be perfect. It is going to be cumbersome and it's going to be a little bit hard, but we can do hard things. We can definitely do hard things. And I think that's a good point. Like plan, but also know like plans change and just roll with it. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's travel. So there's always unknowns and unexpected. And I like, (laughs) anytime I can reduce that, like, okay, flight delays, I can't control. Having to walk to another terminal because they moved the gate, I can't control. So, but what I can control is the setup, is the preparation as much as possible. Um, And my attitude, right? So, (laughs) like, I can't say mine's perfect all the time because that would just be a flat out lie uh but if i have these things in place and i've like communicated with you members traveling with me how we're going to get through this that uh that seems to help me out a ton so we talked about like planning and packing um obviously i'm going to guess you use child safety seats when you're on airplanes why is that important to you so there are a couple reasons that i'm a huge advocate of a car seat on a plane one because it's the safest way for our kids to ride in a plane because of the turbulence that can happen on takeoff and landing, it's just best for our kids to be secured in their car seats. Anybody, any child under 40 pounds, that's what the Federal Aviation Administration recommends. Uh, I'm also a huge fan of it for two other reasons. One is just your own sanity. If you can buckle up your child in that car seat next to you, it is a game changer for you as the adult on that ride. I have done it both ways. I did not know I was supposed to take a car seat on a plane initially when my child was nine months old. It's still, I'm still traumatized by that flight. It was one of the most difficult flights I've ever been on. So because he was moving constantly, he crawled up three rows on in front of us. He was running up and down the aisles. My arms were fire trying to hold him in place. So for your own sanity, I highly recommend. The other reason I really recommend it is you're going to need it. If you need a car seat, at your destination, you should bring it with you on the plane. And most of us need a car seat at the destination. So to me, that car seat's coming, it's just coming with me. I'm going to deal with the logistics of it. I'm going to figure it out so that when we do finally get to where we want to go, I can actually get there quickly. I'm thinking about you saying, you know, talking about your child crawling up the aisles. And I think about like that turbulence that we don't expect coming either. And and thinking about your child not even being in your arms, not, let alone it's really hard as as I think we know now, you know, to hold a child when there's turbulence. But then thinking about like, yeah, they don't want to sit in your, we all know this, they don't want to sit in your lap. They don't want to listen. But if they're in their car seat, it's kind of like a, a comfort thing that they know. That's right. They, they understand the behavior that comes along with being in that seat. Yes. It's it's like when we're in moving things, we sit and buckle up. And that's just the expectation. And so they are used to it. 
and most kids find great comfort in it, they also sleep in it. There is a cost associated um, if your child is uh, under two to purchasing another airplane seat. So I'm definitely aware of that. But if it is within someone's budget to be able to purchase that extra seat and bring that car seat on the airplane and they're getting pushback from perhaps another person in the household that doesn't think it's necessary, I say, okay, I want you to get a chair and I want you to sit it um, in front, like close to something that's going to be like a seat back in front of you. You could even put it like put your kid in a vehicle and sit in the back seat. And then I want you to sit there for an hour with your child in your lap. Can you hold your child in that position for an hour or for the duration of the flight? No. No, absolutely not. Uh, It's just really challenging. We can't expect our young kids to sit easily unrestrained in in a spot when there's like a lot to explore on an airplane. Yeah. That's exactly right. There's a bunch of strangers, right, that we want to check out as well. Yeah. yeah. Food and things that they're doing. And yeah, it's like, we need you. (laughs) That aisle looks perfect for running in. (laughs) Yeah, I was lucky enough when we we took my son that he did sleep most of the time because he was in his car seat. So that was like, that made it very enjoyable. I'm glad that we had that experience um, and not maybe yours. (laughs) Um, When you are traveling, even maybe with bigger kids, because we know the little ones are going to be you know, um, back facing, but, um, should they be, should the car seat go in the same way that it goes in your car, in your car, like forward facing or. or yes. Yeah, so that's a yeah. recommendation is to put it in the airplane seat in the same direction that it is in your car. Now I'm a realistic child passenger safety technician that knows that that's just not possible in all situations. So certainly if your child um is a newborn doesn't have neck control any of that it's never optional they have to be rear facing like for breathing (laughs) not just for restraining but for breathing what a car seat does in a vehicle is different than what it does in an airplane so the recline level that we preach about in a vehicle being critically important for optimal crash protection and for breathing is not as important from the crash protection side in an airplane so if you have to kick that recline up a little bit more vertical in rear facing mode in in the plane seat, that's fine. Again, assuming your child has absolute full neck control. Um, If that's just not going to work, and if your child meets the minimum requirements to like forward face the seat, then you can forward face it. Just try to get it in the plane the way that you ride with it in the car. The other thing for people to consider, they're like, oh, I'm just gonna put a forward facing anyways. Well, your kid's legs are going to kick that seat in front of them. If they're rear facing, they're kicking their own seat. And that can be a huge reason to put even sometimes your forward facing kids to (laughs) put them back around in the plane because that kicking thing can become like a real issue. Do you have any tips for when you're actually, we've made it to the airport, you know, we've gotten through security, but actually on the airplane getting your kid and your car seat on there because I remember that was one of the more anxious things for us as well was like how quickly can I get out of the aisle because I feel like I'm being a burden but also like I don't know what I'm doing right and I've got bags I need to put up and like in the kid to get in this car seat and get him latched in and all that do you have any good tips there you know I think my first tip is it's going to be a cluster okay and that's okay like you're doing the safest thing you've got your car seat you've got your kid anyone that has a a heart of any size is going to look at you and say, let's give this family a little bit of grace. If you're traveling with another adult and you can separate the boarding, so one person goes in first with the car seat and gets it set up and the other person stays back with the child, that can be really, really helpful because one, that child can have more time to get energy out in the airport. We're not trying to combine them to the seat before the airplane is moving. And two, the person that gets on board first can kind of, they've you know, it's kind of like half the stuff, if you will, and they can get the car seat set up. If the goal is just to get out of the aisle as quickly as possible, car seat, then stuff, then kid, then put it, then kind of turn your body and, and work to get it back up in the overhead bin when there's a little bit of a space in, you know, the flow of traffic coming on the plane. It's just going to be cumbersome, but you can do it. In addition to just like getting in, in your seat, Getting down the aisle can be a tricky part because the majority of car seats, not all, but the majority, they're wide and you're enough to hoist them over your head. I'm sorry that if this is the first time you're hearing you would say now I'm thinking about because he has a new car seat, obviously, from when he was like a, an infant. And now I'm 
thinking about like how much bigger that one is and you're exactly right like that's not going down easily under my arm right anymore like how am I going to carry this thing yeah so that's again in that like preparation and planning like maybe do some you know some lifts <laughs> what do you see <laughs> work out and get your squats in yeah get you you know it's like your little crossfit workout with your car seat <laughs> uh, yeah you'll be good to go so have you ever um I know you said that you've done it with a partner but have you ever traveled alone when you've had to ask like a flight attendant or somebody to help you because I just can not imagine a two-year-old and a car seat and all the other stuff and like getting it all done by myself so I personally have not experienced this but someone on my team um has traveled get ready for this with three toddlers and three car seats by herself I mean I just she's like superhero status but I think people will help you if you ask them for help so even if they don't initially think, oh my gosh, well, how is this person going to juggle all of this? If you simply go up to the gate initially and say, listen, I, I'm i traveling alone. I have two kids and two car seats or one kid and one car seat. Or if you're crazy like she was, <laughs> three kids and three car seats, I'm going to need a little bit of extra assistance. Sure. What I don't think anyone enjoys is if you surprise people. If you just show up at the gate and you're waiting to board and they look at you like, you couldn't have given us a heads up on this, <laughs> you know, just, just let people know, here's this, you know, here's the situation. You're absolutely allowed to bring all these seats on the plane, get it situated. And it's going to take a minute, but I would 100% ask for help. There has been a time with my kids where somebody else had to hold my daughter. So there were still two adults and she was like moving down, doing different stuff. And I was like, can you hold her for a minute, please? They were pleased as punch to hold her. <laughs> she loved it too. I was just like, I just, here, can, can you? That's the thing, like for me, I think in a lot of periods, it's hard to ask for help. It is. But I think you're right. Giving a heads up like, hey, versus like trying to do it all, dropping something and then snapping is like not not the look. Yeah, the ego gets kicked to the curb for this stuff. Like we don't need to be superheroes here. We, we're trying to do the best thing for our family, for our kids. And I think the majority of people know that and really respect it and would be honored uh, to help us in any way they can. And on the flip side of that, I think the way we pay that forward is anytime we're traveling without kids, I am always very aware of families and I always offer to help. And I think that will normalize some of this for us when we're on the other side of it. Like, let's just be, you know, good people. And if we see anybody, it could be with their kids or it's someone elderly or somebody who can't get their bag up or whatever, just not waiting for them to ask, but but asking to help. So we've talked about a lot of things that probably went well. Um, I know that you have groups where you're helping folks to, to think through this travel. Have you heard stories or have you experienced anything where it didn't go so well? And can we learn from that? We didn't touch on security as much about getting a car seat through security. Yeah. So that's another thing that I think sometimes, I'll tell you, this one caught me off guard too. There's like lots of different ways you can get a car seat through an airport. And one of the ones I use is a car seat belt to strap it to a carry-on suitcase. First of all, I would never bring a carry-on suitcase again when I'm traveling with children. I didn't want to pay for checking. Oh, it was definitely worth the pay, pay to check. I don't know why I didn't think through this enough, but like I'd obviously have to unattach the car seat from the carry-on suitcase to get it through security. But then I'd have to reattach it all on the other side. And for me, that was a lot because I was also carrying a car seat on my back in a backpack and I was trying to attach another one on. I just should have thought through a different mode of transporting the car seat through the airport. So, you know, I did it once and I learned just like everybody else does that. That wasn't going to work for me. It's just any of the things that people have shared that are not their most favorite parts of traveling with kids and car seats. We typically have, you know, tried and true ways to at least make it a bit more manageable. I didn't say it was going to be fun or easy, but we can make it, you know, we can make it more manageable. Yeah. And we've talked about a lot of the, like, <laughs> the anxiety and the hard parts about traveling, but like, it is also fun, right? Like, this is a new experience for kids okay. that we forget this because we travel probably more often. But I just wondered, like, do you have any memories of the kids, like, pointing out things to you in the airport or on the airplane that just kind of made it super fun. Yeah. I mean, I think because even if we've explored the airport with our kids before, like 
not, not actually traveling that day. They've never been through, like we have a tram in our airport and that is like so cool for them to get on the tram to get to the terminal. Or, you know, being able to, there's playgrounds in a lot of the airports that they love or just the people watching or the little stores that are everywhere that they try to get me to buy something in. <laughs> uh, and then just like their experience on the plane like I'll never forget the the first time my daughter was on the plane and you know a lot of times car seats have to be in the window seat and you know just sitting there like looking out the window and watching us take off and you know just the excitement of that the feeling in her tummy when it went you know the plane went up so I do think there are a lot of really you know yes it can be a bit hard and tiring to plan all of this to lug everything around but you're right our kids don't get to do this all that often most likely and it's a pretty cool experience you know experience for them yeah i'm so excited to do it again this summer because we've only traveled when he was nine months he slept yeah. the whole time which was amazing and i will never complain about that but like to to get him to to have a different experience i'm i'm nervous because he's a toddler now right i can't baby wear him the way i did before and there's new challenges there but i'm trying to focus on the positive parts about how fun it's going to be any of the parts that seem hard within the process if you break them down like we've talked about you know how am i going to get through even just parking the car or what you know whatever that looks like for your family and then how do i get through checking the bags if you just step by step go through that and you realize i do know what i'm doing i am able to control this because i've been through an airport before so i know what's coming and now i'm going to back into what i need to do with my now two-year-old I think you can be really empowered in the process too to say I've got I've totally got this, and you do, and it's one day or it's one day, yeah. Like exactly you, what you said. We can do anything for a day. We don't have to be heroes, right? <laughs> do you have any other helpful tips for parents who are traveling? Changing diapers on the plane can be challenging. One bathroom stall on the plane has a changing table, but it is tiny in those bathrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, so put an overnight diaper on your kiddo. Have them go to the bathroom before if they're of the age where you can have them go to the bathroom and put an overnight diaper on them before you get on the plane. That's a good tip. And find a tribe of people that are doing this and you will feel like, okay, you know, I totally can do this because it's happening all, you're not the first one to travel with a child in a car seat. So Finding some others that have done the same, I think can be really empowering to help you feel like you can confidently do this. Well, I really appreciate all of your tips and and talking us through some different ways to travel with kids because we know it can be anxious, but um, it's also a really fun thing to do. Yeah, and focus on the destination. You know, like you're going somewhere for a reason, hopefully for a happy, fun reason. And the memories that you're going to create there are going to be worth the hours of travel that you're going to endure. So, you know, if you can find the little moments within the travel day that are really special and meaningful, you may not be able to see them in the moment, but you can when you look back. But it's all about the destination that you're getting to. So just keep that in your like line of sight as you are changing a poopy diaper in the bathroom. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I want to thank you again for being with us today and giving some incredible tips that are going to help parents navigate this whole travel experience and do it in a safe and enjoyable way. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. This is Christina Harris with the FAA. I am a mother and a frequent flyer, and I know that family travel can be challenging. Did you know that the safest place for your small child or infant during a flight is in a government-approved child restraint system or device and not on your lap? It's true. When unexpected turbulence hits, it's impossible for your arms to hold your child securely. Here are some tips to help you with your air travel plans. Buying a ticket for your child is the only way to guarantee that you will be able to use a child restraint. Not all car seats are approved for airplanes. Look for the printed message that says, this restraint is approved for use in both motor vehicles and aircraft. Use a rear or forward facing child restraint based on your child's weight. You can also use the AmSafe Cares device for children who weigh 22 to 44 pounds. Use a child restraint or device. It's the smart and safe thing to do so your family arrives safely at your destination. Go to faa.gov forward slash travelers to learn more. Thank you for joining us today. 
We hope you've learned a few new ways to make traveling with kids safe, less stressful, and more enjoyable. Because flying is fun. For even more family travel tips, subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss upcoming episodes that will help families navigate airport security and the boarding process. And if you like this episode, leave us a review and let us know, and then share it. Thanks for listening. The Air Up There is a production of the Federal Aviation Administration. For a transcript of this episode and to follow us on social media to get the latest aviation safety news and guidance, visit faa.gov backslash podcast. That's faa.gov backslash podcast.